<laughs> Press got a little bit of a singing voice there. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. <laughs> Get that harmonizing going. Next episode, acapella killers. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That'd be so dope. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Welcome back, true crime drunks. Um, or like I like to call us this episode, true crime drunks that are just a little hungover. Tad bit. Just a tad bit hungover. Happy late Independence Day. Yeah, these lights are a little bright in here. It's chilling. It's, you know, it's, chilling. it's a vibe. I um, definitely woke up and been like, ugh. <laughs> I'm Wes uh, McBee, and uh, I'm Holly, always. or Hollis McGee, or Holly Lee. Hollis McGee. <laughs> Hollis McGee. That's my rapper name. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Dropping fire beats. Will you go fire get... beats. I feel like I have to be in the UK to be Hollis McGee, though. Can you do, can you go get a face tat tomorrow that says Hollis McGee? Uh, I don't know. I mean, our tattoo shops are kind of closed, so I might have to see if anyone has an appointment, but I think my dad might disown me, so definitely have to get some makeup. Mm. I think it's worth it. It's worth it. But anyways, welcome back to another episode of True Crime Drunks. The topic today, Mary Bell, the 11-year-old serial killer. It's crazy that... So I want to preface by saying that we heard about Mary Bell and wanted to cover her. Yeah. Just because of the fact, like, you don't hear about a lot of serial killers that are underage. So young. And we actually did find out that there is a list. There is a lot of them. More than we thought there would be. But Mary Bell is kind of the most infamous one. Um, And I think one of the main reasons why she's infamous is not just because of being a serial killer or a murderer at the age of 11. But it was through strangling. Which... Yeah. Which it seems atypical. It is. And it's also, too, I think it's, like, because also, too, the preference, she's a serial killer, but, like, not, because, like, she's more of a murderer, but I think because of her crimes being so heinous, that's what gives her the serial right. killer title. But, the like, the fucked up part is, is because she's also, you know, 11. Yeah. She's, like, strangling them, but it's not a quick strangle. Well, and I think, too, the biggest, so obviously when this happened... She made huge headlines, and not just because she's 11, but because of the two um, boys that she murdered, uh, Martin Brown, aged four, and Brian Howe, aged three. So, I mean, anytime you get into anything, even under 18, it makes huge news, but the fact that they were under five... Yeah. You know, that that created like, a huge uproar. They're, like, still toddlers, almost. Yeah, and that was back in December of 1968, mm-hmm. in West End of Newcastle. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, yeah. basically, the I think we're both under the assumption that this was not... I don't think Mary Bell is a serial killer by nature. Yeah. But because of how she was raised and how she grew it's up. It's by nurture. It was definitely not ideal. It was not an ideal place. So let's start it off with, a, you know, what every true crime podcast lacks, a tasteless joke. All right. So this is for my uh, my Vine fans, R.I.P. Vine. All right. <laughs> so when Mary Bell got captured, right? The police officers, you know how, like, police officers, they want to bait you and try to get you angry so you would confess? Yeah. And so they're, like, you know, they're taunting her. They're, like, there's no way you did it. What are you? There's no way a nine-year-old girl can kill anybody. She looks them straight in the eye. She's, like, shut the fuck up. I'm 11. 11? God. Vine is, uh... <laughs> R.I.P. Vine, but also R.I.P. so Vine. relevant because she was 11. Yeah, she was 11. <laughs> I tried to come up with a better joke, but I was like, no, that's, that's you it. You got a full you... sin, Vine jokes. You got a full sin. R.I.P. Vine. Yeah, it, it, it's always forever in our hearts. We're always in our hearts. But, anyways, back to Mary Bell, the classic lady of the hour. So she was born in 1970, 1957. Um, I don't have like a date of birth, but. She was born around then. She was born in England. Um, what was the city again? Newcastle. Newcastle. Yes. It's hard because they're, I'm not really good with their geography. layout and geography. Yeah, yeah. And they have so many little towns within the town. That yeah, I'm it was like, Newcastle upon Tyne, which I don't exactly know where that is specifically. And I don't really know what that means because, yeah, she was in Newcastle, but like she was going to other places to like kill them. With any, anyways, it was really confusing. But so she was born um, in nineteen or nineteen fifty seven. Her 
mom was a single mom because they don't really know who her dad was, but, like, a guy came into their lives because when she was, like, three or four, because that's how she got her last name is from this guy. Um, so she doesn't really have, like, obviously a dad. She has a single mom who's mm. a drug addict, yep. a prostitute. Yep. Married to a man who beats her, her children, yep. everything else. Oof. I mean, it was very heinous. I, I even saw that there was a book made in regards to Mary Bell's mom. And not only was she yeah. a prostitute and a drug addict, but she was a dominatrix. So Yeah, so she was, dom- she was a dominatrix prostitute, especially during this time period where that was, you know, the cliche, oh, like, very cliche. you have missionary, or you don't talk about yeah, it, lights you off. don't do it. Lights like, off. Of that. Oh, man, you have a candle burning? Sinners. Jesus is always watching. Jesus is always watching. But I think that, I think why that's relevant is I almost wonder if the mom, now granted, it could be the drugs, it could be the prostitution, yeah. it could be the awful living situation, but if that dominatrix lifestyle kind of like she couldn't split it she couldn't be a dominatrix in her job and not her and life. not her life because she did abuse mary, mary bell, bell physically mentally. mentally i mean she um so they were so during this time she was also um very poor they lived in the poorest part and she her um her mom would even prostitute her five-year-old daughter So they can make bills and pay for her drug addiction. So on top of everything that's going on with Mary Bell and her parents, she's also being into this lifestyle that she didn't sign up for. She's forced to have sex with men at an unreasonable age. No person should ever be sold off to by their parents, which is devastatingly sad. Yeah. But so she... And I think, too, that yeah. says a lot about her crime specifically is not only was she getting prostitute, like getting sold for money and drugs, but she was around so much domestic abuse and so much domestic violence. And, you know, a lot of it is like there's not a lot of stories about specific situations, mm. but I try and put my mind in that situation where like what we know, I can only imagine that living that lifestyle because like yeah. how many different guys are coming in, how many fights are happening how many days are drugs getting slang in the house? How many yeah. days are, like, people coming in and beating each other up? Like, when you're at that young of an age, mm-hmm. you copy what you see. Yeah, and you can tell that a lot with her murders as well. Yeah. Because, um, so on top of her mom whoring her out, essentially, and doing awful things, her mom even tried to kill her yeah. multiple times. But by the age of, before the age of five, because by the age of five, I think she gave up and was then like, ah, oh, you can make money, I guess. Yeah. But she would, like, strangle her, but not kill her all the way. And she was found once with, like, a ton of, like, sleeping pills. Yep. And, like, she obviously ingested some, but not enough to obviously kill her. But, like, enough that it was noticeable that she had these... I don't remember the drug name, but she had... She was given drugs. She was beat all the time she had a lot of things going on and i'm not i would not be surprised at all and i couldn't find any information on this but with her mom being an active drug user Mm -hmm. i imagine that she when she was born she had to have had problems right right you know i mean i a lot of the stuff that regard in regards to mary bell that we're going to talk about is somewhat speculation just based off of the information we do have yeah and what i kind of think is Maybe her mom had a guy over making money, or maybe it was just a fling or whatever, got her mm-hmm. pregnant, and she looked at Mary Bell as like, you're ruining my life. You're ruining the fun. Yeah. You know, you're ruining my career. Like, you're, you, she didn't want, and her mother was just mentally unstable as it was, and so she definitely couldn't take care of a child, because she was 17 when she had Mary Bell. Right. She was 17. Um, she even tried to, like, at, like, an abortion clinic, like, is what I was reading on here was like her mom even just trying to like give her to random strangers and like take my baby I don't want it no but she would be like already at the abortion clinic being like oh a little too late I gave birth to it take it now (laughs) you know like just she did not want this child and it like even reflected like her school life a lot because she was very um 
she was an angry child. She would have like fits of rage. Yep. She they talked to her about her a lot, just being like one second like okay, and the next it's like oh, it's Mary Bell having a fit again, yeah. which is crazy because like when they're talking about her as like a child, it just kind of shows like how people obviously didn't care about children that much then, because they would just like they're like oh, just another Mary Bell rage, you know? Like it wasn't really like I think no one ever investigated her home life because also during this time too um this area especially they had like tons of abandoned buildings kids were literally just left on the streets to hang out and play while their both of their parents worked it was just kind of like the the system they were raised in is mostly is that they're definitely a, there was it was definitely a nature kind of thing a nurture kind of thing because it was like she lived in a place where it was not uncommon to leave your kid on the street for eight hours a day so you can make money and then they'll come home. Yeah. Or your mom's a prostitute. Like, that's that was a little extreme for that area. Oh, but absolutely. Still, like, it wasn't uncommon. It wasn't unheard of. It wasn't, it wouldn't have warrant Mary Bell to be taken out of the home. No, she's 100% a product of her environment. She's I a, don't. It's possible that she may have had chemical problems, too. Like, maybe she did have some sort of weird thing going on. But I think this is 100% a her, product of, of her. Yeah. Well, and also, too, because, like, yeah, we can make the assumption maybe because when she was a child and almost died of drugs. Yeah. Um, she would, uh, you know, that could change it. But then if you see, when we talk about her later life, you can definitely tell it's definitely a product of her nurture not her nature right and one of the interesting facts that i would like to bring up is the and this opens a can of worms but she at the age of i can't remember six or seven going through school there was a lot of times where she did get in trouble for physically and mentally abusing other children yeah it was becoming a regular thing and that bothers me just because of the fact that i get that the area that they lived in was not an uppity rich area yeah but no one sat her down and was like hey you need to fucking calm down and that could be maybe there is more to the story that we don't know because i really think that there's not a lot of information on her yeah and as you find out i think that when mary bell did get so she was convicted in 1968 of the two murders yeah um i think we come to find out that maybe when she gets sentenced in the time that she has to do that structure and relief from not being just just floating basically yeah like she doesn't have to go home and deal with all these heinous things that that may have actually been the best situation for her yeah but which is awful to say like it's sad to think that the best situation for an 11 year old kid is you know a boarding school in prison yeah (laughs) a boarding school in the prison but yeah, but during this time, she did have, like, um, a best friend, Norma Bell. No relations. I think it's so funny, though, right. that they had the same last name, but no relations. Um, but sh- that was one of her best friends, who was actually older than her. But they think that she, um, Norma Bell, did have a little bit of mental problems because she wasn't a violent kid at all. But she was definitely a follower. Mm. And so that's why um, we'll talk a lot about also Norma Bell, but she doesn't get convicted at all. Because she, Mary Bell was looked at as the leader of all of it. Which, respect, because, like, you know, yeah, but, like, at the same time, I mean, like, Norma still did a bit of heinous things. That's why I'm, like, still confused as to how she got away with all of it. Right. But we'll go back to that once we go over the murders, obviously. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, like, I'm here, but I'm not here. No, I feel you. Well, but, hard to come in after July 4th. It's a, it's a... I'm, glad, I'm just glad it wasn't on a Monday. Yeah. But. That would have been rough. But anyway, so she was known during school as the seeker. And she even had, like, issues of, like, choking other children. Yep. And, like, hitting other children. And, like, that's why she didn't really have a lot of friends either. Because people's moms still were like, you can't hang out with my kid if you're going to beat the shit out of my kid. You know, yeah. like, you're like, you can't hang out and, you know, do all this because, you know. Well, and I imagine going through all the awful things that Mary Bell did, like you mature so fast yeah and i'm sure that physically like she was probably stronger than all the kids because i imagine that she's had to deal with adults 
tossing her around, and at some point you have to try and defend yourself. Yeah, so. you have to defend yourself because also this area too um, was crime ridden and violence, domestic violence even was kind of the norm. Yeah, everyone was dealing with something, and I think that's also why too it was kind of hard but easy to believe that they these girls could do something like that because um i think during this time a lot of people were like not really paying attention to the kids because they were you know watching the adults because the adults were just fucking hog wild just yeah, fucking just crime crazy. and violence all day long so it's like the product of their environment for sure but so two of the murders um, with Mary, the first boy who was, where is it? Early life, the murders. So the first murder took place on May 25th, 1986. And this was um, I think it's... the day before her 11th birthday. So she was 10 when she did this one, but the other one, she was 11. I think the date was a little earlier than Was it a little earlier? She was convicted in 1968, I believe. Cause no, she was a, she was convicted in August nineteen sixty eight, but this happened in May nineteen sixty eight. It says. Oh yeah, yeah, no, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, okay. So they they did find her pretty fast. I thought no, I, for no, some no. reason in my mind it took a while. I think I think I thought I heard you say eighty six instead of sixty eight. That, I probably I was, did. That's what I was saying. I wasn't sure. <laughs> you know what? It was, you know, I probably did. It's. It's one of those. It's a. It's a Monday. Remember the lights are bright. People. The lights are bright. The lights people. are bright. The lights are bright. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so the first murder happened on May 25th, 1968, before her 11th birthday, which is, what a way to celebrate your birthday. All right. I'm just kidding. Just <laughs> so, waking up and just going and strangling the neighborhood kids. The neighborhood kids. But this one she did alone. So this one was the first time. So the first time she did it alone. I think she kind of told Norma about it and brought her into the second one. But this one she did alone. And she, what did she do exactly? She did it. Was she I'm trying to think? Because I know she. There was the little boy. And this one, he was. The first one was what was he? Four. Four. Yeah. So we found Martin Brown, which I saw a picture of the two little boys, and I like cried a little because they were so freaking cute, like adorable little kids. But so she kind of during this time there was so many abandoned buildings. She kind of like took him into one of these buildings because it wasn't uncommon for other kids to play with other kids and like just take them places because they'll come back home you know right because that no one's paying attention to the kids so she takes him into this house and she strangles him and kind of just leaves him there to be found later because i mean i mean just because her family didn't care if she came home or not some people did obviously right. it, it, people these it's not like this whole town was just didn't give a shit about kids so Obviously, a four-year-old goes missing, everyone goes and searches, and then they found his body alone. But they also kind of, because of Mary being 10 and not strong enough to, like, truly strangled, it made it, it almost looked like he fell. And so they originally didn't think of it as a murder. They thought it was an accident. Right. With him. So that's kind of, like, how, like, you know... I don't know how to like to best describe it, like how she was able to kind of get away with it in a way is because of how like she left marks, but not really because her hands are so small it and was so, a, so weak. It was a strangulation from my understanding that took a while instead of like... Like, like if, if an adult if, strangles a child, it's going to take a couple seconds. Yeah, you'll but smash a child their... smoking, ch- or choking another child, I assume that would probably take forever. I imagine it was like the process of like him sh- I mean this is dark right but like I imagine it was a struggle and then he went unconscious and then she just kept going until he completely stopped breathing yeah like which could does, be a while yeah because it doesn't give like crazy amount of details like I mean she did write a book about or did a book about like what it was but I think she was more about her life in yeah. general not really the murders so now don't quote me on this but I know that at least one of the boys there was some other stuff that happened afterwards. that was the second one that's when norma got involved that's why i'm like confused about norma not getting any sentences but i think it's also too because norma felt guilt mary bell didn't feel guilt right initially but so that's what happened is um so she they they believe she did that one alone 
Um, but between that one and the second killing, she kind of told Norma, who was a couple years older than her, and then they, um, that's when they, like, broke into that nursery in Scottswood where, um, where that house, they were, like, on the house. That's where I'm, like, confused about the geography because there's so many little towns within yeah. towns that I'm, like, I think so that close. Newcastle is, like, comparing to our city, like, Newcastle is Davis County, but then there's, like, the Kaysville, little... Farmington, Bountiful. With like, oh, yeah. I like think all that's how I think it is, but I'm I not think... sure. I might be wrong. Yeah. We'll look it up if we ever did another English person. But, and so her and Norma then go into break into the nursery in that area and then, like, like write notes about, like, I killed the baby, I strangled the baby. And, um, and, they, and the police really, because of, like, how the first body was found, the police was, like, it's just some kids pranking us. Like, it's right. not real. Like, they didn't take it seriously, and they still just thought it was an accident to happen with that little boy. Um, so that's what happened with the first murder. But the second murder is where it gets cu- pretty heinous, in my opinion. Yeah, it's very Because that's because now Mary Bell is involved, Norma. And so on July 31st, 1968, they took part in this one together. Um, so... This time it was three-year-old Brian Howe. Um, and this one, they didn't take him into an abandoned area. They took him into, like, like a wasteland or, like, somewhere in Scottswood where it was just kind of like an empty field, mm-hmm. kind of, was what it sounded like. Um, and so they strangled him, killed him, and then they came back. That's the part that kills me is that they came back to the body and then mutilated him. Yeah. Because they, um, because of the autopsy, you can tell that he was, everything that happened to him was after post-mortem. Mm-hmm. So, the fact that they came back was, like, well, ballsy, I, but, I, like, I, also, like... It's hard because you have to put yourself in the mindset of an 11-year-old right now. Granted, she's not a typical 11-year-old. She's yeah. done things that, God, we hope most adults never have to go through. Yeah. So, I mean, it... I I try to think, like, from, like, a psychology point of view, like, if this was her trying to, like, say, like, this is how I wish I could kill the people who have hurt me, but I'm so small, I can't, I have to do it to this kid, like, Mm -hmm. and it's a man that represents probably the sexual abuse and the prostitution that she's had to do, like. Yeah, and I think that's, too, because, um. It's definitely planned. I don't think they just did this and went, like hey, let's go do this right away. I think that she did formulate a lot of plans around doing this. Um, yeah. Ooh, wait. Which kind of, I think, goes into why she did get convicted. Yeah. Well, and I think that's too, like, yeah, definitely. Because um, it's hard to tell what really happened after the fact the body died. Cause, um, because you're dealing with a 13-year-old, 11-year-old, their statements contradict each other. So you, right. no, they don't really know what happened. Because, like, there's a different couple theories. So the initial theory was is they killed him, left, and then Mary Bell came back and then mutilated him. Because he was found with an N carved into his stomach, and then it looked like someone else carved the N into an M kind of thing. And um, also, they used a razor and, like, cut off a bunch of his hair because they found hair laying around him. Yep. Um, his legs were all shredded, and then they, like, mutilated his penis. And so I think that's where the abuse of men kind of come into play why Mary Bell would have done that is because I think she just did it by association because, like, well, as, you know. Well, and I think, too, like, um, if it were to go further, mm-hmm. it could have potentially been something that was, like, serial killer vibes because it did have, like, at least when I saw the hair stuff, right, like, you kind of think, like, oh, is that... Is that like a, a trophy? Like a trophy? Like, did she cut off his hair to like keep any of it? Because like, I mean, they never found any of it on our person, our personal belongings. But I mean, as a kid, you can always hide stuff and never tell anybody. Oh, absolutely, a hundred percent. But so essentially, what happened was, once he died, they mutilated him, and since the kids were young, oh, it's Kai. Oh. Hi. But since they um. Since that happened, it was just a lot. It and is. So, it, and it's it's scary to think, too, that 
even 11 year olds can have that kind of uh, the, desire. Yeah, which when we get a little bit later in the episode, I have quite a few different other ones that children just do that. Right. Because you just never think like a child could think to do that. When I thought of one now that we've been going that yeah. we can talk about later in the episode, but the whole uh, um, Slenderman killers, the two girls. Yeah. Because they were under 18. I don't remember if they were like 13, 14 or whatever. We're going to talk about that later. But we'll talk about that later. But yeah. So anyways, so essentially once they find this body, they're like, okay, maybe that note we found in the nursery isn't a coincidence. And maybe this second little boy correlates with the first one because this was a month apart. Right. And so by August of 1968, um, they started to associate but also during this time they kind of like started looking at children more so than adults because of um because of like the strangulation not being like adult hands and things like that but the thing that kind of gave them pointers to mary bell was um after this happened mary bell and norma was hanging out and her um norma's dad came home and literally freaked out because Mary Bell was strangling Norma and Mm. had to break the two apart. And that's when even Norma's dad was like, to the police, was like, I think I have a suspect for you. Um, This girl just tried to strangle my daughter, not even, I think, realizing his daughter was involved initially as well. I have a weird speculation about this, and I'm curious where you sit on this. Mm -hmm. You know, with her being involved in different things right and like her mom being a dominatrix do you almost think that maybe the strangulation was so common in their household that maybe she thought that that was like normal normal like or just like a way to get what you want from somebody because like in 2020 right we all know like choking is really popular especially when it comes in the bedroom but back then like it wasn't a thing you talked about it wasn't a thing you talked about so maybe to her it was a very common like hey like yeah especially too if um like, if she was seeing her mom be a dominatrix, because it's kind of hard because you don't really know right. what was happening, especially because it's been so long now. But um, I think you can easily say, like, yeah, probably because of her mom. And, and, and you know what? Just because your mom's a dominatrix does not mean you're going to be a serial killer by any means. No. But I think in this kind of setting where I think she probably saw her mom do it to other people, it could definitely, like, make sense in a sense that, Especially during this time period where it wasn't common to be a dominatrix. And also, too, I don't doubt that when her mom would be annoyed with Mary Bell or wanted to do something, she probably choked her. Yeah. So it's probably just she saw, she had a hat done to her and did it to other people. Yeah, absolutely. I'm and sure then, it was, I mean, it's that thing, right? Like, even if you're around kids who aren't in situations like this, if you start doing something and they think yeah. that you're cool or whatever, they're going to start doing it, too. Like Yeah, like, I mean, that's what, like, the whole... Um, that's how kids are. Yeah, that's how kids are. That's why the whole um, dare drugs is, yeah. like, they're like, just because your friends do it doesn't mean you need to do it. But also, you know that if your friends are doing drugs, you're probably going to end up doing drugs. Yeah. It's just, like, you do it by association. association. Yeah. And so it's... I mean, like, then that's the thing, too. It's, like, just because all, all your friends do drugs doesn't mean you're going to do drugs. But... In a sense that because she's so young and impressionable, and also her mom's trying to kill her so many times before the age of five, essentially, I wouldn't be surprised. When something's so readily was. available, you typically will do it one way or the other. Yeah, and she, I think it's also, too, kind of goes back to um, she definitely, like, thinks that she was so abused all the time. She wanted to be the center of attention, and that's why she's always a problem child. She always, like in school like she was wanting to be a show off and like have a reputation of being a person and like she's even quoted saying as a kid i like hurting little things because they can't fight back well and i think think, go ahead sorry like yeah going back to like how her herself could never defend herself now she's in the plot the power move she's in like the position to be the one harming someone else instead of being harmed well i think too what we know about bullying in 2020 right is like typically the ones who bully are always the ones who have the most problems and they don't necessarily bully just because like they like to hurt other people but it's a cry for attention it's a cry for help and they don't know how to ask for help because in their household you just get hit you just get hit yeah and like if someone's acting like a quote-unquote a bitch you hit them 
Yeah. You know, so I think that that's a lot. I think there's a lot of <laughs> very obvious things that if this was going on in 2020 in a mm-hmm. place that wasn't yeah. awful, they'd be able to stomp it out. But because poor areas, shitty school system, it sounds like. And also know, this wasn't. No one cared. Yeah, no one cared. 1968, 60s, kids were still just fucking kids. They, they weren't. They didn't even have milk on cart, like ch- like missing children. Yeah. That, that wasn't a thing. They didn't care. Yeah. They were just like, oh, maybe they'll show up. Yeah, they'll, they'll come back. They'll come back eventually. If they maybe. don't, we'll make a couple more. Yeah. It's cool. It's, it's cool. easy. It's whatever. Everyone can do it. Exactly. So, but yeah, so that happened. And on December 17th, 1968, She was convicted of manslaughter, not murder, but manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. Um, And so they basically diagnosed her as a site, what is it? Classic symptoms of a psychopath um, described, the judge described her as a dangerous threat to society. And she's very, um, she's a great risk to other children. Yes. Because it looks like she was mostly, well, obviously she was more into her and children. So, um, but Norma, she was acquitted because, um, because when they were doing the interviews and like the psyche vows and stuff, they, Norma had remorse and she regret doing what she did. Mary Bell had no remorse and I didn't really understand what she did wrong. Yeah. It was more she just didn't understand what she did wrong and more of like, well, it is what it is. Right, and I will say, I will give credit to the the legal team on that side of it because instead of just sending her to go rot... In jail, yeah. They gave her different opportunities to try and... Because, I mean, it, when you hear about all the facts, right, like, you, you can sit back and think, like, well, fuck, if she just had... A normal mm-hmm. upbringing, like, just probably would have never happened. But because she was in such a fucked up situation, oh, yeah. man, she needs help. And she's not 40. This isn't some 40-year-old no. lady. And she's not even 18 yet. She's 11. She hasn't even hit her puberty yet. Yeah. Like, we, like I mean, most girls don't even start their periods until they're, like, 13, 14. Right. And so, like, she definitely was a child when this happened. Yeah. And so... Instead of just throwing her into jail or juvie, they actually sent her off to boarding school. Yeah. Which is crazy because while she was there, you can tell how much she grew as a person because then she was, like, talking to her mom and was like, Mom, if you just admit that you are a bad mother and that you raised me and that this is what you did to me as a child, I would probably be getting out of here now. And her mom was like, I'm never going to admit. Because her mom didn't want her reputation ruined. But yet... Her mom would still then go off and sell pictures that she drew, letters, talk about her all the time to the media for money. Yeah, all the time. All the time. Yet, she would never admit to fault that because she was made her daughter a child prostitute, tried to kill her, do all this stuff that she didn't create a killer. Her mom is a grade-A scumbag. Her mom's a grade-A like, scumbag. Like, I, it, it's crazy to think that... You almost think that the mom should have gotten more charges than Mary Bell did. Her mom should have gotten some kind of charge in yeah. general. On the principle alone of just prostituting her daughter out at age five. Yeah. Should definitely have been like the kicker because it's like. That, hap- that shit happens nowadays. That lady's probably getting hung in the street. Yeah, she probably get yeah. She would go to jail and she would get she would die in jail. Yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent, unless they put her away in the pedophile unit. No. Yeah. Any yeah. And, like, yeah, and, like, but she, so, so she goes to jail, Mary, or Mary Bell goes, it's more of, like, she goes to, like, uh, like a, like a, like a boarding school. Yeah. But it was kind of, like, it was definitely, like, a boarding school for, um, troubled troubled youth. Yeah. So, she went to boarding school, um, and then when she graduated, she went to more core open prison, um, until... She was, what, 23? Yes, So she was 23. But, yeah, so she went to then, like, the, it was called, yeah, Moore's Court Open Prison, which sounds like, um, basically it was prison, but they made it, it was, like, prison, but it was mostly, like, a halfway house, it sounded like, because it was kind of like you took care of yourself, and you didn't really have tons of, like, um, 
Supervision. No, yeah, and you yeah. definitely had more freedom to try and, like, figure your own shit out in a way. Like, it, yeah. it definitely seemed like something that would be beneficial for a lot of a lot of people but i don't know i thought it was interesting that and great because like you hear so many times where like people just get thrown away and then they're just gone from society yeah or they're stuck in the system for the rest of their life like yeah it really sounded and this is the reason why i don't think that she's a serial killer is after leaving prison when she's 23 she served a total of 12 years and yeah you know some of that was in the boarding school and some of that was in mm-hmm. the open prison i think that that structure is all she really wanted in life because i am you know going home and having who knows what would happen at her house right i imagine there was oh, plenty yeah. of times where she just didn't even go home and it gave her a structure that she could follow and i think that any kid needs that they need some sort of structure yeah well and also too because like yeah so she went to like the boarding school where i think she then got like a proper education and a proper like mental health doctor like a a therapist i don't know i said mental health doctor a therapist where she like had to learn i like how they instead of just throwing her in jail and leaving her like leaving her and labeling her as a killer because she did kill people yeah but Instead of just throwing her away, especially someone so young and still so malleable can change back. Because I don't think... If she wasn't raised in that situation, she would never have been a killer, in my opinion. I agree. I think she has psychopathic tendencies because she didn't know what was normal. She didn't know that that really, really wasn't okay because... She was um, raised a psychopath. She was raised that way. She was raised to be that way. I mean, my mom was trying to kill me at the age of three multiple times. Hey, and just a quick hot take. Just like how no one's born a racist. People become racist. Yeah, no one's born a racist. And yet, by your um, family's beliefs or what you read or what you actually decide to believe, then you kind of become a racist. So I think, and I think that, that I think Mary Bell specifically, because there isn't a track of like, she wasn't labeled a sociopath or any of those type of yeah. things that some, not all, but some serial killers tend to have like that sort of, you know, mental health problem or yeah. mental health struggle. She didn't have any of that. So I, it was a hundred percent a product. And I think the only reason why Mary Bell is so talked about is because when this incident happened, yeah. it was so popular in that area that's yeah. just carried over into the serial killer culture. I think it is because it's, well, I mean, she's 11 years old. It's sh- fucking wild. Shocking. But I think um, her case as well is like a great look for um, for the psychology world of nature versus nurture. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to, are you a product of nature or are you a product of your environment? And I think she was a product of her environment because once she was taken out of her environment given a structured life went to she did go to jail she was yeah. like she couldn't because like um because she was in the open prison but she did try to escape and had a 29 day penalty of where she couldn't yes. leave that prison ever for not 29 days and she never did it again i wish and that so, there was like, more information about that because i almost wonder if i want to know if that was like a teenage rebellion thing or if that was like hey i actually think that i'm better now yeah because she did it when she was really like I think it's because, like, also, too, when you're, 12 years is still a long time to be held in a place, you know? So I right. think it was kind of, like, partially I just don't think she really thought about it. I think she was probably just, like, testing her waters. Like, you know, testing the limits. Yeah, See course. what she can kind of get away with. Everyone does that when they're younger. Well, especially when you're a teenager and you don't really get to have your rebellious, rebellious phase because, you know, you murdered someone. So that's your consequence. Right. She, she took her punishment. She took her medicine. Yep, yep. She took her as medicine. As of uh, the Shining, <laughs> throwback. <laughs> oh my god, I have so. Oh, anyways, that was a side note. <laughs> I forgot that um, we do a book podcast. If you guys don't know already, shout out! It's outs. great. Shout out to Read Between the Wines. We did the Shining once. And I started seeing this guy, and I was like, "Oh, listen to our podcast!" And I knew that was a good episode. And we hung out recently the other day, and I, like, made a joke about The Shining, and I was like, I hate that movie. And he's like, oh, I know how you feel about The Shining. And I was oh. like, how? And I was like, I listen to your podcast. And I was like, 
Oh, God damn, God. it's happening. I was like, oh, no. That's okay. No. Another funny side note that's not associated with true crime. When I started seeing my girlfriend, yeah. she listened to the podcast, and one of the first things she heard me say was me talking about beard rides <laughs> and how everyone seems to really enjoy them. And I was like, oh, fuck, I forget people can just watch the podcast and I hear me talk. I forget that people can just know everything <laughs> if I just say it on the internet. <laughs> it's great. But but. Anyways, to get back to Mary Bell, one of the other reasons why I truly think that she's not a serial killer is how she acted when she got out. Yes, when she got out, she got full anonymity. And, and, and it's a hard word, and I hate it. Anonymity. 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 Anyways, anonymity. what it means is you are completely anonymous. You're given a new name. You're basically given a new identity, so you aren't associated with who you were prior to this. Will work. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to pronounce words. Oh, my computer's to release it right now. But <laughs> an o no midi anima anyways, whatever. But she got that when she was released. She got a new name when she was released. So the courts deemed her worthy enough for society because they gave her that they gave her a new name and a new life essentially to yep. start well not really like give her a new life like she didn't live comfortably afterwards she had no. to work and be a normal person in society and then um four years later she had a daughter she had a daughter she had a daughter who then also... anonymity god damn that scared the shit out of me <laughs> that was such a little bit of thanks computer thanks computer let's turn off that volume um <laughs> so that's some true crime right there that was terrifying. Um, so they get it, and they give it. I didn't realize this, but technically, legally, her daughter was born with that safe net as well, that anonymity. anonymity. I didn't even realize what it said because I was no, so shocked. No, it shocked me. But um, with Mary Bell getting that, technically her children aren't safe from that. I didn't realize that about the justice system. So Mary Bell actually had to go to court for her daughter yeah. to fight because um, the press, when I think her daughter was about 14, because um, I think when her daughter turned like 12 or 10, it kind of released the time period of it. Right. And the press were trying to get to her daughter, so they were able to get it for her daughter, so it was like illegal to... There was even one circumstance yeah. where the press had gone and found where they were staying, Yeah, and they had to put like bed sheets over their face to escape and get out of there, because I truly, Mary Bell didn't want that didn't want past that... haunting her. She didn't want her daughter to know what she, she didn't, did. She didn't want anything to do with her past. Like, the only thing she ever had to do with her past was about a book, but... Especially when it comes to her daughter, she didn't like she didn't want her daughter involved. So that's when they went to the courts and was like, "You need to protect my daughter because what can I do? I have to leave my house with bed sheets over my face." Right, and and for the record, she did win that court case, so her daughter did have the full anonymity for, for the rest of her life as well as, as a granddaughter. In two thousand nine, she had her first granddaughter, and all we know of hers, her name is Z. Because they didn't want any of the names to go out there. Mm -hmm. Her name's Z, and she also got that um, right as well of an enemy and an enemy to me. Um, but yeah, and currently uh, Mary Bell is 36 years old, living her life. No one really knows where, who, nope. what, where. If she ever married, if she ever did anything. The only time she ever really talked about her murders, and I was reading like this one person gave her a lot of like a lot of shit for it because. The thing is, I don't, I don't think what Mary Bell did was in any way okay. No. But I think if you really look at what happened to her as a child, was not even remotely okay either. And it just, it's what happened. And um, she did actually write a book about it. And she got like $50,000 to personally speak out about what she did, how she did it. And then talking about with this person of like, how she like regrets it and like her life and like how she like um and it and the book is mainly about what it what what would you do if you were Mary Bell in this situation and it talks a lot about Mary Bell's life as a child and what kind of drove her to it in a way of like how she doesn't even like she never even could never she could never know what was right or wrong because she just well and I think too know. like I don't know we're at 
this is we we talked about this with John Wayne Gacy on the last episode. Yeah. Um, if you guys haven't heard that one, make sure you go back and check it out. Website will be up soon. Um, yes. It's it's a fine line, right? It's a fine line. What she did was awful and heinous, but I think in her particular circumstance, it's a little bit different. And she probably did the fifty thousand dollar book deal to better herself and her family that she had at the moment. And also, too, to be an av- advocate to kids in her situation because it's like not all kids in her situation are obviously going to like kill somebody, but it does lead to bad situations and bad... Like, they might not kill somebody, but they might be, like, in a different way bad, but also they could be really good people. Every person's different. You can't really judge one person on something... <laughs> Especially with, like, how their childhood was. I mean... Well, let's not pretend either that if she wanted to be that person to cash in on that, she could have made a lot more than $50,000. Oh, yeah. she And then she also wouldn't be protecting her children and grandkids from Like, I really... Honestly, like, so we have, like, set things that we like to talk about when we're doing this podcast, and one of them is, like, the turning point. Yeah. And I, I think there's a turning point for when she did the murders, when she committed them. Yeah. But I also think this might be the only time that we ever talk about a positive turning point. I think it is when she actually had that structure in her life and she realized that, like, oh, so life isn't just me getting sexually abused and strangled and having to go home terrified or all this type of stuff. And that there yeah. is a bigger picture than me just being an object. And I think that she had that turning point and was able to switch her mindset which i'm sure it was through lots of work and lots of struggle and lots of therapy and different things like that but she was able to push through and realize like oh i can actually have somewhat of a normal life and she did i mean from what we know right i mean a normal life is having a kid and you know yeah going about your business and that's all she seemed to want unless she is like something crazy now we don't know about it because she would be what She's born in 57? She's 63 now. So, I mean... So she's, she's, yeah, she's yeah. grandmother. And her daughters would be what? Like, in their 30s? Yeah. Her so, grandkid, if she was born in 2009, is 11. Yeah. Yeah, Matt. Yeah, granddaughter, yeah. So her she'd granddaughter's be, 11, so her daughter would be probably, like, 40 now. Yeah. Well, no. She, she had it when she about... was 23, 28, 28. She had it when she was 28, right? 27? 27 or 28. And then her daughter, I mean, her daughter had a teen pregnancy. Who, who knows? Yeah. Who am I to judge? No. Happens. Happens. But, um... But that's the thing. when we, we don't know a lot about her life, but I almost think that's a positive to take away from the situation because... Yeah, if, she's not banking on it. She's not banking on it, and if she was bad and evil... Well, yeah. I'm sure we would know about it. She would continue on with it, but I... Because, like, in the her book... It's called Cries Unheard, Why Children Kill, the story of Mary Bell. And a lot of it just goes into um, her childhood and how she, her, it basically, even in the summary, it talks about her breaking point of like when she just doesn't, like she almost disassociates because she's like, I don't know what life is. Yeah. And nothing makes sense because she doesn't get to, because she doesn't, like also too, you got to think this time, you don't get to see like what life really could be or you don't get the classic sitcoms that are, have happy endings, you know, like you don't see that. You only get to see what's real right well, then and there. And to go with the disassociation, right, like you've seen the Haunting on Hill House, right? Yeah. The TV series. There was that scene where they, one, I think it was that show, I might be wrong, but where the there was like an investigator and they were investigating like one of the girls. They were talking about some monster. Am I thinking of a different show? I think I might be. Oh, no. You're thinking of... Uh, no, that's the right one where it was um, the one sister who can touch you and kind of see you who you are as a person and how... Right. Oh, yeah. Then, she was an investigator and the one yeah. girl was saying that her house was... There was a monster downstairs There's in the basement. There was a basement, monster in her house. But the reality was is her stepdad or it dad was... her was foster dad was... A, sexually the, abusing her and she saw this piece of wood... That looked that, like a monster. And it... She took all the trauma and horror from that and put it in this monster. When in yeah. reality, the monster was the foster dad. It was the foster dad? Because yeah, because um, she was a she's a child psychologist. Yeah. Or no, is she a personal investigator? One or the other. She does a little bit of both, I think. But, but regardless, that's to, yeah. that's a reality that we live in, where you where kids disassociate trauma because they can't, their brain's not developed enough; they can't handle it. Yeah. So I. 
And I mean, like, in my, in my personal life, like, my, my mom left when I was six, and, like, I didn't realize, like, how fucked up the situation was until I was, like, in the eighth, like, ten years later. Yeah. It was, like, it was, like, it was basically about, like, when I was, like, she left when I was six, like, the day after Christmas, never said goodbye, just Jeez. left. And I never really associated, and I never, I don't remember that, because I've always disassociated that as, it's okay, she's taking care of my sister's. And I always, like, put my mom almost in this different scenario of, like, what she was doing. Like, almost like she was being, like, a savior to my sisters. When in reality, she was actually being, like, worse, giving my sisters a worse off mm. situation. But it's, like, besides that, like, it doesn't even really matter. It's, like, it's just kids disassociate so easily because their brains can't comprehend how awful life is. Yeah, it's so much knowledge to take in. It's and... so much so quick, especially someone so young, especially at Mary, Bell, Mary Bell's age. Where she's literally like a prostitute at the age of five. Yeah. Like no child should ever have to do that. Like no person has like, like if you become one at eighteen and it's consensual and that's what you want to do, that's one thing. Or you know, and like it's sad how many women get into that situation where they don't have the choice; they just have to do it. Right. And I mean, like, it's not always like there's nothing wrong with like. Um, being a prostitute if that's what you want to do right. but in a situation where you're not you don't have a choice yeah, it's set. so easy to disassociate and I think that's also partially too if we probably if like the psychologist like put out the files on Mary Bell that's probably why we don't know a lot about her as well is because of the anonymity that she got um, it probably sealed a lot of her records too yeah. so that's probably why we don't know a lot about her psyche at the time and how she probably overcame yeah what happened to her like processing wise yeah well i mean she was in the system for 12 years 12 years that's a lot of time to get therapy and get help and i i yeah, don't know I, person. I came out of the research on this one granted there's not a whole bunch of stuff you can find yeah but i came out of this one actually more positive instead of where Gacy I felt like oh my god this is this is this, mad, the, mad. Gacy scared me Gacy scared me where Mary Bell kind of like and it's sad too because even nowadays if you google it you just see this terrifying mugshot picture of her like oh yeah dark but, eyes dark uh, hair I don't know if you guys can see that but like yeah like it's 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 Mary haunting Gacy, just look up a picture it's just like the picture they pick of her is not and, and like, best. it's almost like we still make her out to be this terrible person when in reality, like, once you know the whole story, you kind of feel for her in the sense that what she did was still bad. And I don't ever want to – it's tough when we start talking about things like this, right? Because the two victims didn't deserve anything, right? Like, yeah. Martin Brown and Brian Howe, like, yeah. those kids died at – such a young age and didn't even understand what was going on and that itself is is so bad and so sad and like and it's tough to like really say something positive about the situation yeah but i think that making mary bell out to be maybe the 11 year old mary bell was a monster but 23 year old plus mary bell wasn't yeah and that's like it's it's really it's a hard line especially in this situation because it's like she did take two lives it's it is unforgivable yeah but does it mean and not saying that we should first start forgiving murderers no especially adult no. murderers because when you're an adult i feel like you know exactly what you're doing absolutely i mean in this case you can have i feel like this one is definitely a good like controversy of whether or not to forgive or forget in the situation because definitely like even like the victim's families are outraged were outraged by her being able to go back into society 12 years later and oh, they yeah. say they were saying like where's the protection for the victims because you're giving the protection of the killer but that just goes into the sense of where do we because like I mean the the it's a little political but where do you where do you put the line of trusting your justice system in a sense especially like in the uk their justice system's a little bit i don't know how it is there but it sounds like a much better place than what we're getting with ours right now right because unlike um because what it sounds like from them is they took her for 12 years and basically raised her into being a person of, that's okay for society right and like instead of just like tossing her out into like just like 
um, go juvie it. or something and just kind of being like, you all right. it out. Yep. Good luck. And then like when she's 18, you're like, all right, you go into society, you're alone. They kind of like reformed her. They made her a better person where, and she became a better person because I don't doubt for a second they kept tabs on her the whole, her whole life. I oh, know yeah. I still keep tabs on her to oh, make sure she's sure. not a murderer. And well, and on like top that. of the fact too, like. <laughs> If you put yourself in adult version of Mary Bell's life, right? Yeah. If she really, truly did recover. Yeah. And became a, you know, a... A positive a, member of society. Yeah, a positive whatever. member of society. She's living with that demon every day. She has to live with the fact of what she did every single day. That she day. killed two small children with her bare hands. With her bare hands and then mutilated one of them. Yeah. But... With that in mind, too, it's like, I mean, <laughs> um, from Sweet Life of Zach and Cody, <laughs> Mr. Mosby hit someone with his, with his car when he was drunk, and yeah. he still gets to live every day of his life. Yeah. You know, because they considered it manslaughter, not murder, because of how young she was. And that's where I think that's where, like, the line really does draw is because it was manslaughter, not murder. Can we take, we, we make tasteless jokes on here. Yeah. Bruce Jenner killed someone in a car, but Caitlyn Jenner sure didn't, apparently. Good, good facts. I guess we're not going to, I guess we just forgot about that situation, yeah. right? Like, like you know. just because you change your name and gender doesn't mean we're going to, so we're, we're going to forgive everything that happened in yeah. your other past. Yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, that's where it goes, too. And I think, I think it's at that point, it's kind of like, you, that's your opinion, and you should believe what you want to think. If you don't think she should belong in society, that's fine. Yeah. Maybe, and, like, I get it. I understand where you come from. I think she's 63 now. She's living her life. We don't know anything about her. It's not like, I mean, even, because um, we talked about it last episode with John Wayne Gacy's sister, but there's that, um, the Craigslist killer's daughter has an entire TV show, and she's banking on the fact that her dad killed tons of people, and how she wants to help see like um, killers' family members cope with the fact by like talking to the victims' families, and like to me that's fucked up in a sense because it's like you didn't kill anybody; your dad did. Your dad was a monster. But now you're making the money by yeah. what your dad did. That, to me, is where I draw the line of what's okay and not okay. Like, I mean, I've watched the show a few times because, like, we're doing our research and I want to hear how the family perceived this person because it's like, obviously, you don't really know anybody. Right. Unless, you know, you don't know anybody. You just don't. Yeah. But, um, like, to me, that's more sickening. And, like, she did this book deal, which... A lot of people give her shit for it because it's like, well, you're making money off the fact that you killed kids. But she's also bringing an awareness of what it's like to be a kid during the 60s, which during the 60s, kids had no rights whatsoever. Right. John Mulaney, the comedian, talks about how his, he's like, the most civil rights I've ever seen come into my lifetime were for children's rights. Yeah. Because children didn't have rights back then. So I think it's kind of like... A double-edged sword. Yeah, working grown man factory jobs and shit. Like, like, yeah, like kids were shit on so much back then. And I think Mary Bell was just unfortunate. And I mean, like, don't get me wrong. There are some children serial killers we can get into that are just messed up in the head. Yep. And that's kind of like where it goes back to, like... It's case by case. It's case by case. And I just think in Mary Bell's situation, it was nurture, not nature. But then you go to, like, a Dahmer, where it's definitely in their nature, because from the beginning, he was killing, decapitating, um, what it, skinning and, like, yeah. dissolving animal bones and body parts. Like, so that's from, like, the beginning of, like, I think that's just in the, his nature. Right. But I think, and you could tell that because it goes into their later life. And not that, like, everyone that killed an animal as a kid is going to be a murderer, but it does give that kind of tendency of, like, that is a first sign. She didn't really even have that as much. Like, she didn't really have that sick pleasure of doing it. It just, she did it to these kids because it was happening to her. So, 
I think it was that disassociation. But, Absolutely. you know, everyone has their opinions. You can be totally wrong with this and think that she doesn't deserve anything. I'm oh, yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I definitely sit on the fence with the book deal still a little bit. But I like what you said with the whole idea of, like, did she do the book strictly for money or did she do the book to try and, like, raise tell awareness. her story and raise awareness? And that's yes. always a fine line. That's a fine line. And I think, too, also, too, you have to think – she might also wanting to be saving her reputation because her mom was selling all of their secrets yeah. on the side besides her own. Her mom was just telling everybody about Mary Bell, not what her mom was doing to her. Yeah. That's what kid was hush-hush, and that's why we know what happened to Mary Bell as a kid, mostly because of what Mary Bell told this author, which, I mean, also, too, that's all she made. If she did a book now on her own fucking millions serial killer culture would eat it up eat it up and then her kids would have royalties she would have royalties she could go start doing podcasts she could do podcasts yeah if she was like i want to come out and start living my story and making money that's when it's like okay okay that's why you gotta not do that because you gotta live with what you did that's why i take away a more positive than negative from this is like going into like the 2000s where serial killers and murder and stuff like that that culture be- started becoming like cult fans yeah like there was fans of serial killer culture like and like even today both of us are fans of how crazy it is i like the true crime aspect yeah. but it's not like i definitely i'm not gonna like get a tattoo or buy any merchandise of this serial killer on it no. like i'm not good i'm not I'm more interested in the psychology. I love psychology. I was going to become a psychologist. I was going to be a criminal psychologist for the longest time because it was so fascinating to think of. Because I'm just like that kind of person. I like to put myself in someone else's shoes. And it's really hard to understand and get into some like a murderer's self shoes because you're like, I could not so fathom. So vastly different. And that's where like it's really interesting, the psychology of like everything, especially like the psychology of like Mary Bell. There's not a lot out there because I think... Well, I think that's um goes to I don't know how it is in England, but like I know, like laws here is that like if you do like a crime at a certain age, it gets kind of like hush hush and sealed in your records. Yeah. Because you're a minor. Right. Same so, here a little bit. Yeah, and I think that well, that's what I was talking about. They have something here that like seals the records. Because what was it? There's another crime that, like, if they would have just opened their records, but because it happened when they were a minor, they couldn't legally do it without, like, subpoenas and warrants, but there wasn't enough information. But if yeah. they would have had the records, they would have, like, solved it faster or something. I don't know. That might have also been a TV show. I just love crime. Right. And that's the thing. I'm the same way, right? I think crime, especially in 2020, is the most interesting aspect of just life because it's still going on. I don't think it will ever stop. And no. getting in the minds of you know, serial killers or just murderers or cults or whatever it might be. Yeah. Is like the last dying, well, not dying, but the last like taboo thing that isn't ever going to be allowed in culture. Yeah, it's definitely not. Well, it's just sticky. You know, yeah. everyone has their opinions on it, and that's why it's like you just got to respect other people's opinions. Like um, when I was talking about that guy last, last, last podcast about um, how he like, he would sell paintings for John Wayne Gacy, and he literally was like, oh, I'm just a collector, but if someone burned my house down and didn't hurt any of my family and destroyed all my memorabilia, or he's like, if I died and my family just set my house on fire, oh well, oh, well I, it, it, I just liked collecting it. It'd be cool if it went to a museum, but if someone deemed it not, or just dis- decided to destroy it, it wouldn't bother me because I find it fascinating but i don't care about it right. it's just cool to look at yeah. like i think i think that's true crime in general it's fascinating it's fascinating and it, it's real you know because like it's we real. can we could have a podcast about fantasy books but in, it's not it's not reality it's not reality you it's, know? Not, it's not something that'll happen it's the most dramatic thing that's in reality true yeah. crime is drama that is real it's and real drama it's you know it's cases like this Mary Bell, I think there's a lot to learn from it, and I think people could take away some interesting stuff that could be viable. Yeah. Well, I think it helps um, in the psychology world, especially, like, learning about children and, like, understanding, like, the nature versus nurture, why it's such a big, hot topic. And, like, I don't know how you stand on it, but I think you, everyone's a product of their nurture 
and just a tiny bit of their nature. I don't think there's one or the other. I don't think it's black or white. I think it's a little bit of both, but I think a most majority of it is their 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 nurture. Yeah, I I definitely think that I think that there's very few cases where it is nature. Yeah. Cuz like even even your most famous serial killers had some sort of fucked up childhood. Yeah. In some way or the other. They had something that, like, was their turning point right. into why they are the way they are. But I think there's also a little bit of something in your nature to be 100% okay with that. Because, like, something that might have happened to ta- Ted Bundy probably happened to another guy, but this guy didn't go and murder people. But this guy did. Right. You know, it's like, I think it's like, I think it's, that's why I think it's like a mixture of both. Because I think there still has to be that, a chemical imbalance to be like, oh, that happened. I'm going to continue doing my thing. Right. And I mean, I I think, too, one thing that is sad is when there's labels that get thrown around, right? Because Ted Bundy was, what, a sociopath? Or, yeah. Because uh, um, there's sociopath, psychopath, different things like that, but Bundy didn't feel empathy for anything he was doing, right? Yeah. But there's people who live with that who are very successful and very well ingrained in society oh, like a, also like a narcissist as well yeah like they're there's like, like d- yeah like i mean just because yeah so I, I mean, think that it does have to be a combination of both because i don't think that everyone who might fall under just like this category or this blanket mm-hmm. isn't going to end up being a serial killer that it's like a spectrum right like you could be oh, yeah a sociopath but still be a hundred percent an amazing human being yeah you know and i i know one specifically great awesome very productive, does yeah. a lot of things for society. He just happens to have that, that diagnose and that part of his brain that just, because of how he was born, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And there's nothing, you can't discredit that person, but because of how media is, he yeah. still gets discredited. It sometimes. just gets discredited, yeah. And I think that's where also, too, like, um, talking about, like, some other child killers, like... Um, I mean, like, the BTK? Yeah. Butcher, torture, kill? Yep. BTK. I, I learned the, the what it actually means, and now I can remember how his name goes. I mean, he, um, he, like, killed his mom, didn't he? And that's, like, kind of where it started? I think so, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about him later. But, like, it kind of just goes to, like, every person's different. Everyone has different chemicals in their brain. Everyone is functioning different. So it's kind of, like... You can make your judgments on what you want about somebody. My personal opinion is I don't. I think Mary Bell did something so heinous that it is unforgivable. But she's making herself a product in society that's helpful and is good. Yeah. And I think her telling her story and selling her story was like, eh. It's on the fence. It's on the fence, definitely. But the fact that she doesn't really get royalties from it, and she's not really making money from it nowadays, yeah. and she's not actively trying to seek out the publicity. Well, I'll, <laughs> she's not trying to be famous from what she did. She wants to. Right. She just wants to be not known from the world. Yeah. She just wants to, you know. And maybe, and I, I can't speak for her, but maybe doing the book deal was part of her trying to cope with what she did. Maybe it was her way of redeeming herself. To Maybe. explain herself. Yeah. You know? You know, there's definitely yeah. a lot of different possibilities, and we'll never know. I think that if she didn't come out by now, she probably will die, and yeah. we'll never know who what her name is now. Or No. I don't see her kids probably coming out, because if they wanted to ca- cash in on it, like, the kid's probably, what, 40-ish? Yeah. Probably would have already happened. It would have happened by now. And also, they wouldn't have gone to great lengths to get that, that anonymousness from her every generation yes i wouldn't even be surprised if her grandkids go through that too oh yeah i wouldn't be surprised if they have like something in the court system maybe not like after that like maybe not her great 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 grandkids but her great grandkids maybe even right because i mean her granddaughter now is dealing with that yeah. of being secret and i don't know if that's a um like like um rose bundy ted bundy's daughter no one has any clue of what she is it just depends on the person that's why i don't i don't nothing against the craigslist killer's daughter and having a tv show if that's her way of coping with what her dad did, fine, do whatever. But I do still think it's slimy a little bit because uh, it's like, I if someone murdered my best friend or like my family member, I really would not want to hear from another family member yeah, to apologize for the killer. I wouldn't give a shit. I would be like, 
I appreciate that you knew what your what someone in your family did was wrong, but it doesn't matter because they still did what they did and you didn't. And I don't know why you're apologizing when right. they should be apologizing slash what does it matter at this point? You, My loved one's gone. Yeah, I, I haven't done enough research and don't know the specifics of what she's doing with that whole thing. It, but it's the, the show's just the pretense is like... Uh, as she's helping, like, like the episode with John Wayne Gacy's sister, she's helping that person cope with the fact that they're, like, in this case, her brother did something bad, and going to the victim's houses to kind of talk about it and, exp- like, just mostly just to apologize and be like... I don't know. I mean, yeah, I would just... have to watch it before I want to give any judgment, but just... first, firsthand, like... Just Tip- watching it, it was just like, I did it. I would not want to well, be involved. Well, typically, right, like, when it's been a long enough time period, you probably don't want some fucking asshole coming and bringing right. stuff back up. Like, And also, I don't even think I would want to see my killer's siblings. No, you're like, putting more faces to the trauma. You're putting more people behind it. It's like, why didn't you stop your brother? But it's like, you can't, but the thing is, logically, you can't, put that on the sister either because the sister didn't know what was going on literally the mom was living in the house and didn't really know what was going on she knew something was up but she didn't know she wasn't gonna you know she wasn't gonna like not trust her son she was just like oh maybe he's just a little bit of a weirdo yeah but like because you because you want to be like then mad at the mom you want to be mad at the sister but it's like there's only one person to be mad at is the killer but at the same time i get where you're coming from it does Hearing how you've explained it, it does yeah. sound slimy. It does sound like a money grab. Yeah. And I personally, like, I don't know how someone feels who's had someone murdered in their life. But yeah, I, imagine, I wouldn't know. I, from what you can read, I imagine it is just awful. And if I was a family member of a victim of John Wayne Gacy's back when he was running rampant. Yeah. And what, we're now 20 years after 30 years after yeah right it was 71 when he got captured yeah. so about 30 40 years now so like i don't want to fucking hear about it anymore i've had to hear about it my whole life at that point i want to try and move on yeah like i don't want to have to be thinking about my son who was 15 who died would be 55 right now and i should be having grandkids kind yeah. of thing yeah like, i don't want to have that kind of mentality yeah that's how that, that, i that's that, that's where where i know as a person i think more of like future wise and i think of every little detail and i think of like if i had a son and he died wow i'm missing out on grandkids maybe even great grandkids because yeah. of someone killing but that's where it's like it could be different maybe there is someone who wants to hear an apology. Yeah, you know, and that's why, too, like, they're not, like, it's not like they're, like, going to these people's houses and, like, banging on the door and be like, let me apologize. It's, like, they're, it's formal, it's set up, they both, both parties agree to okay. it. So it's not like they're, like, ambushing. It is both parties agreeing. I just don't know how those people agree to talk about it because it's so t- <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I see. Money talks. I'll go talk about anything if someone's like, hey... You want ten grand? Yeah, I'll say whatever you want me to say. Yeah, I guess I'll <laughs> talk about my son's death with you, yeah. stranger. Yeah, weirdo. <laughs> yeah, but I guess maybe like that's their way. And, you know, like you no, know, no judgments. If that's what you got to do to cope, that's what you got to do to cope. But yeah. I just personally think it's a little bit of a money. It's a money grab. Yeah. But I think it's just a little slimy extra as yeah. well. I think there should be laws and regulations on what can make money and i definitely don't think yeah, people dying should be something you can make money off of but yeah i digress i'm like maybe we don't know maybe all the money's going to some charity maybe I don't that's know. the case full send it's full send yeah i mean maybe but if she's getting if her yeah. wallet's looking a little chubby because of this that's not okay <laughs> that seems it's it's a double-edged sword for damn sure right but well i think that i covered everything on mary bell because we ended up going over the the non mainstream like stuff that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Because like I like we said, there's just a lot of the facts that are out there about her. I mean, it's limited. It's limited, and I think a lot of it is just because of how young she was, and also too, no one saw her do it, and her and Norma couldn't really get their story straight together, and yeah. it kind of you know it kind of tricked things up because it's like who do you believe and like. After the fact it was murdered, it's like, well, now she's talking to her therapist. So it's like, yeah. that's when it comes confidential. So we don't really know the whole 
We know the we know the story. We just don't know the truth. Yeah. The full truth. But and we know everything that's important. What I was saying earlier about a different sh- child serial killer situation was the Slender Man one. Mm. Um, I don't know all the details, but basically, from my understanding, is a girl. Um, she moved to a new city or whatever. She was kind of all edgy a little bit. Yeah. Um, and she had like two friends. And I might be misquoting, right? Because I've only done a tad bit of research on it because I played the Slender Man games. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? This is just like a little side bonus yeah, episode. Yeah, basically, s- side clip for you. Yeah. If, you, if, you're, if you're good on what you need to know about um, Mary Bell, then you're good. Yeah, you're good. Stick around, though. We're going to tell you what's, ne- what's coming up. It's good stuff. Um, basically, they she made a friend and she started convincing her that someone was this slender man was talking to her oh. and then they brought in another friend and the two the, the main girl and the other girl took her the third friend out into the woods oh, and like yeah. stabbed her in the name of slender man yeah because and i don't i i believe that both kids ended up getting in trouble yeah. and both kids are now in like today's equivalent of an insane asylum mm mm-hmm. mhm I want to know, though, if the Slender Man thing was something that she fabricated or if the Slender Man thing is someone online telling her to do this stuff. That's a good question. That's the thing that interests me because, you know, in 2000, what, I can't remember when it happened, but Tumblr was around, horror stories, creepy um, pasta. Before, like, things kind of got, like, censored a little bit more. Yeah. Like, like, it was very much easy, readily available. It's very easy for someone to pretend to be Slender Man <laughs> online and convince a little girl to go do some things yeah. for her. That reminds me of this movie. It's on Netflix. It's called, I think, Mercy Black. And it's the same situation, except with, except not Slenderman. It was um, this, like, fabricated uh, monster. They actually watched the movie. It's so... Is it The Rake? Is that the story about the rake? Or no? Might be wrong. It, it's this... No, it's the exact same formula. This, These two... It starts off with this girl basically leaving, like, a mental asylum or a mental facility and joining society. And it's, like, her past was she went in there because her friend stabbed another girl and died. And she was just kind of, like, the, um, the uh, accomplice, not the murderer. Mm. But, so it's the same situation. You should watch it. I'll send it to you. It's actually pretty spooky. It's, like, very cheesy, but it's really good. Oh, look at... I was just... Look at all the... the yeah, just checking. But, yeah, so coming up next for us now... Yes. Um, one thing that I haven't figured out yet. I will be gone the weekend of July 23rd. It's my B-Day. Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah, because your B-Day is the... 20th. 20th. Mine's Monday, yours is the Thursday, it sounds like. Yeah, fucking Thursday. Fucking Thursday. Who likes having birthdays on Mondays and Thursdays? Bullshit, literally. But, so we won't do a podcast this weekend, or this upcoming weekend, so yeah. the 11th and 12th. We would do on the 18th, so it would actually skip over our birthday week. Yeah, so it be, would be, be right before our birthday week, and then we'll come back the weekend after. Right. So, Two weeks after our birthday, I guess. So on the 18th, we were in talks of what we want to do next. Yes. And I'm open to discuss because I'm definitely never dead set because anything can be interesting. Yeah, everything's... it. That's why if you have any ideas or if you want us to cover something, email us at truecrimejunks at gmail.com. Let us know what you want to hear. Yeah, very us, easy email. Truecrimedrunks at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. Like, it's... It's that easy. It's not spelled weird. There's no underscores. You it's don't got to worry about it's it. It's just straight true crime drunks. Actually, now, now, I pitched Golden State Killer just because yeah. he it's is relevant fully now. convicted. Right? It's fully convicted. He's about like he's finally been sentenced, and I feel like they're so it's so relevant. I mean, it's a hot topic right now. Hot it's, topic. I mean, I is there another serial killer that was that? I mean, he wasn't necessarily active because he was in the system for a while now, from my understanding. Yeah, well, I mean, he's been captured for a little bit, but now he's, like, officially sentenced and all right. that fun jazz. But we don't, there's no other serial killers that are active in the news. That we know of. That we know of, so. Because the theory is there's, like, what, 200 active serial killers in the United States yeah. currently that we could kind of know of, but there's probably 2,000 active serial killers easily yeah. that we don't have any clues on because 
you know. You never know. You never know, because it doesn't become a serial killing until you have the person and you find that they killed multiple people. <laughs> right. So, without finding the person who did him, you don't know if it's a serial killer or just murders. Right. Anyways, I So, think... with the Golden State Killer, too, there could be some hot takes, because I believe that he was a cop for a long time, too. Yeah, he was a cop for a little bit, and that's where it very sticky situation. Yeah. Because, you know... So if you want to commit to that one for the next one, we can. I think we should do that one next, and then we can go on to some other fun ones. Because we're thinking about then also doing, like, so we'll do one more serial killer, and then we're going to do something a little bit different. We're not sure if we want to do, like, um, like someone's death or a missing person or maybe even a cult. Cult would be cool. A cult would be really cool and really fun, I feel like. And I don't know why, but, like, summers always make me think of cults. I don't know why. Interesting. Well, because, you know, like... I don't, my favorite my favorite thing I learned in psychology is correlation does not mean causation. And the rise in ice cream sales and the rise of murders are correlated, but they're not... Um, causation. Causa- it's not the causation. Just because the ser- like the price it, or like murders go up doesn't mean people are buying my ice cream more. It's just because it's warmer weather, it's easier to kill people. Is why... Interesting. It's like it's a correlation, but not causation. Yeah. One does not cause the other is a reason, but it's a correlation. So I feel like I always associate cults because they're always, like, taking pictures in the spring. Yeah. And, okay. like, also then Midsummer too, helps yeah, a lot. Midsummer, yeah. Midsummer, you know. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, good movie. But I, that's where I, I, like, correlate, but I don't cause it because I know that's not really the case. I don't remember what we were doing here. Oh, I was actually listening to a lot about uh, there's this, um, on the topic of, there's a, it's in England, there was, like, this, guy who was like he would murder people but he, like as like a vampire oh yeah that's right i forgot that we we kind of talked about yeah, that's where okay. it was like killer cover up because it was like he was like i'm a vampire not right. a killer or i guess i'm a killer but it's okay because i'm a vampire you know like something like right that. so if you guys have something that you want covered that we'll, email we'll do it we'll do it we really we're just here for a good time not a long we'll, time but a good time a good time hopefully a long time but you know I hope so. I hope so. At least a hot minute. Um, shall we close it out then? I think we're good, yeah. Also, um, the website's going to be up sometime this week. Um, it's going to be truecrimedrunks.com. It's going to be super simple. That's the domain, just truecrimedrunks.com. Follow us on um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook for t- top shelfers. And then I always do this. I don't know why I can't. But uh, follow me on Instagram if you want, Books, Coffee, Bees. Um, that's just kind of like where I post horror-related stuff. I love horror. Um, yeah, I think that's like all that there is. We're going to do the Golden State Killer for sure next week and then come up with some ideas. We'll do whatever you want to do after that. Yeah. We're, we're open to the possibilities of being whatever. Yep. Thank you guys for listening. and uh, Have a great day. Have a great day. Mary Bell did good at getting better after her killings. Bye. Bye.